Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Right Way Wednesday. Today I want to talk about a particular type of audit or the TPEs, Targeted Probe and Educate audits that are happening all around us right now. You may have been involved in one, you might have just heard about them, you might be really nervous that you're going to have to um, send in ADR requests as a result of a TPE. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what a TPE was and some tips for dealing with a TPE if you and your team or your facility is chosen to participate in that type of probe and educate audit. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is just because you get a request to for a TPE doesn't mean you are doing anything wrong. Reviewers, or excuse me, Macs are basically data mining all the time. They're taking a look at your peers, they're taking a look at you, they're taking a look at what's happening nationally, regionally, within a state. So they're really looking at what providers are billing for and looking for any practices that sort of fall outside of the norm on either side. Okay. And when they see a provider, that is potentially practicing outside of what is considered typical or normative data for whatever area they're looking at, they may want to take a closer look. Now, does that mean you're doing anything wrong? No, absolutely not. It just means that they want to look further, okay? Because the goal of this program is really just to educate providers to, to ensure that providers are billing properly, that they're not um, doing um, or practicing in a way that is going to result in any kind of billing error. So it really is a way to sort of help providers make sure that they're billing properly for the services that they're providing. All right. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is what you always want to be doing and what we always talk about on this page is making sure that your clinical documentation supports everything you build for. At the end of the day, if you've done that, then you're in great shape. Whether you are involved in a TPE audit or not, you are going to be able to support those services that you've billed for. All right. You want to take the process seriously. So if you are, if your facility gets a TPE letter, you want to take that process seriously. Take advantage of the services that they offer because they do offer some great education services once you are involved in that TPE. Ask questions. If you don't understand, don't assume, never assume, always ask questions. You know, compliance with guidelines and the whole process really is a team effort. It shouldn't be put on just the rehab director or just the MDS coordinator or just the billing coordinator. It is a group and team effort as with every ADR or in the appeal process in general, if it gets that far, um, including clinical doc documentation, right? Each team member must support the other services and the entire skilled stay within their documentation and it all has to work together, right? So it's no different than that. Um, if you've completed the first round and your claims are denied, you want to make sure that you are adhering to appeal guidelines, that you are sending in everything that you need to send in to support the services that you've built and you're again working as a team to develop that appeal packet. You want to make sure that you respond to all requests timely. All right. Um, don't don't assume that just because you've never received an ADR from your Mac means you're never going to be involved in a TP. It doesn't necessarily work that way. All right. So you want to make sure that you're looking to at your data and how that data compares to your peers. So take a look at those PEPA reports if you haven't done that. If you're a rehab director and you have not done that yet, that is a great place to start. You want to look for any areas that are above or below the national, state, or jurisdiction outliers. All right. And again, ensure that your documentation continually supports the services that you're billing for. All right, I want to talk about some, if you're thinking about your PEPA report, what are you going to look at, right? So you're going to look at any, um, your rate of rehab plus high ADLs, right? Your non-therapy high ADLs. You're going to look at the number of COT assessments that you're completing and how that falls within the average. You're going to look at just rehab ultra highs in general. Are you providing more or significantly less than your peers? You want to look at your length of stay, right? So lengths of stay that maybe are exactly 20 days and no more, or lengths of stays that are 
a little bit lengthier than normal, maybe those over 90 days. So you want to kind of look at those, those data points in your PEPA report because they can give you some great information. And again, if you're falling outside of that normative range, it doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong. It could just be that your population um, uh, needs that length of stay or whatever it might be. So you want to just make sure that you're taking a critical look at your documentation and making sure that overall the clinical documentation supports those services. And again, at the end of the day, if you've done that, then you're great. All right, some other factors to consider when you're looking at your documentation. Um, you know, is there evidence of rounding of therapy minutes? We did just talk about that as well in our live feed that we did a few weeks ago. Again, when we talked about that, we talked about anything that really might indicate that we aren't billing properly, possibly, okay? Um, you know, uh, any kind of thing like that, right? So you want to think about those kinds of things. And I wanted to just kind of go through because every MAC has a TPE program. They're all looking at similar things for the most part. Some are a little bit different or others. Sometimes, or some MACs are focusing in on one particular area at the moment, and then they'll focus in on another. Some have broadened the scope a little bit about what they're involving in the TPE process. So when it comes to therapy, I'm just gonna give some examples. So CGS just in October announced that they were expanding the TPE program. They already had it going on and they were looking at specific CPT codes and areas of service delivery across the medical field. But then they expanded it to include our um, Part B outpatient codes, which include therapeutic exercises. They were looking at neuromuscular re-education, aquatic therapy, gait training, manual therapy, and therapeutic activities. Now, they doesn't mean they're not going to look anywhere else, but they're focusing in on those codes and looking for practices that fall outside the norm on either side, and then potentially deciding whether or not to go in and take a closer look through a TPE. All right, and CGS was just simply following suit um, behind other MACs who had already done that. So for example, Palmetto GBA um, had already added therapeutic exercise to its list of TPEs back in July. Novitas had already been looking at therapeutic exercise and therapeutic activities specifically in August. Um, First Coast was looking at outpatient physical, occupational, and speech therapies specifically um, related to therapeutic exercise. Um, they noted that specific code as well, but they also had that broad outpatient PTOT and speech services as well. So really at the end of the day, determining your risk for TPE is really important and you wanna continually look at the data. You wanna continually do qualitative audits of your clinical documentation. And you really want to make sure that you are prepared should any TPE letter be received at your facility. So if you do not know what your ADR process is within your facility or your appeal process, um, you need to talk to someone today about it. If you're a rehab director, talk to somebody, that key person in your facility that you can get involved with so that you can be actively involved in that process to ensure that all of the documentation, the clinical documentation we submit is not only accurate, um, but it has the right signatures. It has um, documentation to support every CPT code we've built. All of that is really important. I can see my little um, office mate moving around back there. Um, so here are some common, I did want to just kind of finish with some common errors. So things to kind of look for generally within the documentation that they have told us have really been some common areas through the TPE process. Max have given us some feedback about this. So signature of the physician wasn't included. So maybe evaluations weren't signed or signed timely, or the SNF cert wasn't signed, or maybe orders were missing signature for some reason. Um, missing or incomplete, incomplete SNF certifications or recertifications. There are very specific rules about what needs to be in a cert and when it needs to be signed and how often it needs to be signed. So you want to make sure that when your facilities are reviewing that documentation that you are looking at that very carefully with them. All right, missing admit to SNF or skilled care order. So if it's a part A, they are looking for those admit to SNF orders. And so again, 
you are not necessarily responsible for getting that order, obtaining that order, and obtaining the signature on that, but you can be a partner in the ADR process should you get a TP to help them make sure that that is there, signed, and signed timely. Documentation that doesn't support the ADL score, that's really big. So you want to make sure that they're sending in ADL logs and that the clinical documentation between therapy and nursing are truly supporting any ADL score that has been um, reported on the MDS. And counter notes did not support the skilled services bill. So they're looking at our daily notes. Did it support every CPT code that we said we delivered? Um, did it support the overall need for skilled care in general? They're looking at that as well. And documentation just doesn't meet medical necessity. That's a big one too. And that is definitely something we have a role in. And so use the tools that we have on the page in our file section. You can go right there. If you are a health pro heritage um, clinical or excuse me, clinician, you can get to those tools on box if you're a rehab director or on your iPads if you are a therapist and use those. They are at your disposal. Um, if you are not a health pro heritage clinician, ask your team specifically what they have, if you haven't already seen it, to help you with your documentation. Um, don't take people's word for it necessarily either. You want to go do your own research. You are ultimately at the end of the day responsible for your clinical documentation. So we played a little game last week about Medicare myths. And there were only four people or five people who got 100% accuracy in that. And that you are not alone. If you played that game and missed some of those questions, you are not alone. There are a lot of myths out there. Myths that sound like they make sense, right? Um, but they really aren't true. And so we want to make sure when we hear something that we're asking for the source document or going and looking it up ourselves to make sure that that's been interpreted correctly or that is something that is what actually needs to happen. So take the initiative to do that on your own as well as your clinician. I know you don't have a ton of time, but there are great resources out there. CMS, the CMS website is one of them. Um, we have chapter 15 of the Medicare Benefit Policy Manual up in our file section for you. You can always refer back to that because when we put together our tools, that's one of our main um, resources that we use. We use LCDs. We use um, Chapter 8 of the Medicare Benefit Policy Manual. We use the Medicare Claims Processing Manual. There are a lot of them, but Chapter 15 of the Medicare Benefit Policy Manual, again, is in the file section for you, and it is a great resource, and it has a ton of information about what's required documentation-wise. Go to your LCDs. Take the initiative. Look at that yourself. See what they say about the codes um, specifically about skilled eligibility, what's considered skilled services and what's not, and really use that to critically look at your documentation to make sure that you're supporting what you deliver. And um, as always, you can ask us questions. Come here to the page. You can ask us in the comment box below, or you can just send us a question at any point and um, we will do our best to answer it along with providing you sources so that you can go and take a look at them yourselves as well. So thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, let us know we're here and happy documenting.